Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video today, I'm going to show you a very easy way to make UI interaction and animation that can be integrated into websites, application, or games using a very incredible tool named Brive. So let's get into it. So Brive is a very powerful tool to build interactive animation that runs anywhere from mobile, website, to games. So as you can see here, that it can create a very smooth animation and interactions from game to um, emoticon or character animations and a lot more so all of these can be produced in bright and can be integrated easily using Rive runtime so in this tutorial today i'm going to show you how to make this really cool button interaction so we have a button here and by default we have a polar bear is looking quite sad and he's looking straight to your eyes and begging you to subscribe to his channel and when I hover on the bear, it will turn and look into the text. And when I click, surprise, boom, it's become happy. And it's to show you his cute paws. And just to be clear that this bear is not me at all. So it's just a bear, right? It's not me. So for some reason that I click unsubscribe, maybe I don't like his face, I don't like his voice and he will be sad and he will back in youtube surprise again um so it's a quick and simple uh, demonstrations to start with so let's get into it so here we are in the right startup screen so as you can see i already have two projects here i'm going to click on this to create a new project so we have a bunch of uh, template here but for this one i'm going to create a blank artboard to start with all right, so here we are in the main interface. So uh, let's just give you a quick tour of what we can do here. So we have these two tab here to toggle between design mode and animate mode. So when I click on animate mode, it will show you more UIs to create animation with the timeline and more. So, um, so we'll go back to design mode. So here we have the layer panels and down here we have the access panel and this will be the contextual menu so that will be depends on whatever you're selecting on the art bar. so up here we have a bunch of pretty standard tools so we have a menus a select tool a canvas and art bar tool a pen tool and create some basic shape and this is a bone tool so it will be used to create character animation which is pretty interesting but we will save it for the next video all right so um now i'm going to select the artboard and maybe let's change it to xd size so the bigger the better right so to create the illustration you can start from scratch in Rive, or you can import a svg file into Rive. so i already have this illustration in illustrator so all i have to do is you export it into a svg file so just click here to export and select SVG and go name it bear. So we go to desktop, right? All right. So now let's go back to Rive and let's select the bear SVG and we're going to drag it to the scene. So it will processing a little bit and then it will show up in this access um, panel here. So all I have to do is just drag it into the scene. So a quick note is normally we don't necessarily have to have the text in the button because it will be integrated later in HTML. But for this demonstration purpose, I will leave the text here to have a better context of what this is all about. So if you look at the panel on the left, you can see all of the layer of the illustration is being listed here. So you can select any of these layer and animate it. But the first thing I want to do is to change the color of the background so uh, we can have a better looking scene. And the second thing I want to do is to uh, clip the excessive part of the part here. So I'm going to give this a name. Uh, so this one will be arm right and the other one will be arm left. So let's select this one and then go to this panel. So you see this clipping here. So let's click on this blood button and it will ask you to select a layer to be the clipping mask so i'm going to select this blue um, peel shape here so that would be this shape so let's select it and now you see that it's being clipped and you don't see the excessive part anymore so i'm going to do the same for this one clip and select this shape and now this two part will be um, 
you know, inside the shape uh, nicely. Alright, so I think we have everything we need to start animating. But before we start doing the animation, I would recommend you to uh, give all of these layers uh, a proper name because it would be very helpful uh, when you start working with the time life because it will help you to know exactly what layer you are animating. So I'm going to click here to switch to animate mode. So uh, in this mode, you can have uh, some extra UI here. So we have this animation panel down here. So basically this panel will store all your motion timeline in this project. So you can create as many timeline as you want by just clicking on this button here. And up here we have the state machines. So basically this is where you set the logic of your interactions. Uh, but we will talk more details later. Uh, but now let's select timeline one and I'm going to uh, rename this as idle because we need the first state of the button when there's nothing's going on. Uh, it will be the idle state. So for idle state, I'm going to select all of these layers that I need to animate. So that's including the body, the ear, the eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and everything else. So with all of these layers selected, I'm going to give them a base keyframe for each of these values. So we set a keyframe in position and scale and also rotation. So this is really important because it's going to make sure that you are able to create the smooth transition between one to another timeline. Alright, so that's it for the idle state. We just leave it this for now and then we're going to click here to create another timeline. And for this one, I'm going to uh, name it hover. So this, this is going to be the timeline for our hover state. So let's move it uh, down here. And so in this hover state, I'm going to move these layer around. Uh, like for the mouth, I'm going to move it a little bit to the right. So you can see that it will automatically create a keyframe here. And then I'm going to move the rest of his face a little bit to the right. So he can look like he is uh, looking at the text. Oh, there's one thing I forgot is in the hover and the idle state, we don't need to see this uh, this is this arm. So we need to, we can, let's just hide it away and move it down out of the um, canvas. So same for the idle state so we don't see it. All right, so now you can see that we have the two state idle and hover. Maybe we need to also change the color of the button when we hover. So I'm going to uh, set a keyframe to this button uh, in the idle timeline and also go to hover timeline and then change it to a darker colors. Alright, so now let's create another timeline and for this one, it's going to be the click stay. And let's move it down here. And also in the click state, I wanted to change the color to pink like this. And for the bear, I'm going to uh, make him look much happier by just uh, transforming this and rotate it a little bit. So he looks happier and do the same for the other eyebrows. And for the mouth, I'm going to make him a big smile. All right, so after we finish the click stay, uh, we're gonna have the free timeline here that represent each of the state of the button. So we have the idle state, the hover state, and the click state. So next step, we're going to use the state machine to connect all of these timelines together and create the interaction. So let's click here to go to the state machine. So the first thing we need to do is to select a layer that's gonna be the hover area or the hit area that should be this button layer here so let's select this one and with this one selected i'm going to create a input for it so let's click here and create a boolean input so i'm going to rename it as hover boolean all right and then we need to create a listener for this so i'm going to click here and rename this listener as a hover in and with this one selected, uh, let's go to the right panels and select the pointer enter. That means when you hover on. And for the set, let's select the input is hover boolean. And the value should be true. And let's go back here and create another listener. This one should be hover out. And then go to the right panels and this one should be pointer exits And select the hover boolean. And the value for this one should be false. So we have the two value here, hover in and hover out. So next step, we're going to uh, go to this visual diagram. 
so you can see the current logic is uh, we start at entry and it will take you directly to the idle state so i'm going to move the idle state here and now i'm going to drag the whole state to this diagram and then i can click on this and connect the idle state to the hover state so we're creating a connection between this one and then we can click on this arrow here to give it a condition so on the right panels uh, let's create a new condition here and then select the hover boolean that we just created and the value of this one because this one's going to be the hover in so let's select the true value and then i'm going to give this transition a duration about like 200 milliseconds so now you can click on this play button here to preview so this is the idle state and when i hover on the buttons it will take you to the hover state and automatically create a transition uh, for the bear and when i hover nothing's going on because we need to uh, let's pause and we need to create the opposite direction so let's uh, click here and point it to the idle state and now you see that the opposite arrow shows up here so let's click here and do the same here so the transition should be 200 millisecond and create a condition uh, select hover boolean and for this one it should be false so let's give it a preview so when i hover and when i hover out it's go back in so we have this hover interaction here uh, wait a minute we have a little bit arrow here so let me just fix this so the reason why we have this arrow is uh, one of the time by missing a keyframe. So let's select the hover stay and select this one. So this one have a keyframe here. So let's go to idols. And so yeah, we're missing a keyframe in the idle state. So let's just create a keyframe here. And now you can see that is the under nose is uh, having a keyframe here. So now let's uh, give it a preview. So go back to the state machine and give it a preview so click so now it's working better so much better all right so next step we're going to create logic for the click interaction so let's select uh, the button area and then create a input and for this one i'm going to select trigger so for this one let's rename it to click trigger and let's create a listeners for click and on the right panels so let's select pointer down and let's select click trigger so all right and then let's select the click timeline and drag it to this visual diagram and now i'm going to select the hover to the click stay and click on these arrows and create a condition and for this one, so let's select click trigger and give it also a 200 millisecond transition. And I'm going to do the opposite and select the arrows, give it a condition, and also click triggers. And this one should also be 200 milliseconds. All right, so we have the logic all set. So let's click here to give it a preview. So when you hover in, hover out, hover in, out, click unclick all right so it's working pretty well so what you can do to make it even better is to create some extra motion in this state for example the hover state or the click state so i would do an example here so we are in a click state i wanted to animate this arm to um, you know moving a little bit so i'm going to select uh, one arm here and by default we have a keyframe at the very first frame here so i'm going to set a keyframe for the rotation value and then go to this position and then change the value a little bit and it will automatically set a keyframe here so now i'm going to select these two and then paste it to cover up the timeline so we can have a perfect look and make sure that the first frame is going to be exactly the same as the last frame so let's move it a little bit to the left and then when you preview you have this uh, little hand arm movements here and you can even like select um, this keyframe and give it an easing uh, so i'm going to select here to give it some easing and then it's a little bit too fast so maybe i would to, uh, remove this two keyframe 
and then just expand it by just holding option in macbook and then just drag it to the end of the timeline so now we have this movement like this so i would do exactly the same thing for the other arms so so now we have something like this so let's go back to the state machine and preview so this is idle state over in out in click happy so currently it just play one so let's go back to here and then and then click on this button here and change this to loop so now it will just play indefinitely so let's hover click unclick hover out hover in click unclick so once we're happy with this you can export it into multiple format depends on what your needs is so you can click here to export so it gives you the option to download this file uh, as a runtime format so runtime is a uh, open source libraries that allows you to load and control animation in games apps and website um, so this is more like uh, developer things um, so i'm not a developer so i'm, I'm not going to dig deep into this so all i know is that once we have this library installed it will create a environment for all of these animation to work perfectly so in short drive is perfect for filling the gap between designer and developers because designer usually have some ideas about interaction to make experience richer but sometimes it's a little bit challenging for developers to make it real but with this tool, you can just go here and create awesome animation uh, and there's no limitation of creativity to what you can do. And once you finish the animation and interaction, you can just throw the file to, to the developers to integrate it into the website. So it's going to make the whole process so much easier. So this is the end of my tutorial today. So I hope you find it helpful and I will see you in the next one.